We're going to move just a short way away from here now and uh, talk to Jerika Duncan, who has more on some of the, the students talk about these warning signs that may have been missed. She has more um, on that part of the story. Jerika. That's right, Jeff. Uh, here you can see that the street is blocked off. This is the area where Cruz was last staying for the last three months uh, with another family. Investigators and people who say they know Cruz asking the question tonight, what more could have been done to stop him? 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz didn't appear to have many friends. Former classmate Vanessa Burton says he was a loner, but she hung out with him a few times. He like just hurting things. Burton says as a kid, Cruz jumped in front of a moving car and he liked to hurt animals. She said he was kicked out of at least two schools before being expelled from the Marjorie Stoneman High School, which he terrorized on Valentine's Day. He wasn't allowed back in school because he was over the age of 18. And that's why he hated the school. Cruz had no police record and he seemed obsessed with firearms. He like kind of fantasized about the other things like Columbine, like Hitler, he, like he fantasized about like those types of stuff. Officials say Cruz left warning signs on social media, posting these photos on Instagram, posing with knives and guns. He joke about being like not really being a Klan member, but just it's the stuff that he was into. Today, local authorities say they are not aware of any ties that Cruz had to militia groups. He had so much anger and pain inside of him. Paul Gold lived next door to Cruz in Parkland and says after his mother's death, Cruz was even more depressed. I felt that he might at some time be a danger to himself. Neighbor Shelby Spino says she knew Cruz was trouble. If we could just turn the clock back and like do something different, but I, I don't know. After this latest shooting, the sheriff here uh, saying that he hopes that there will be more efforts to really focus on mental health. Jerika Duncan, thank you very much.